What I'm doing today is a yeast starter. So guys, we're in a familiar place, my kitchen. I haven't been here for a while, have I? Now, I've never done a yeast starter before, so this is new for me. I probably won't ever do it again because of, you know, dry yeast works fine for what I do. But I wanted to do it just to experience it. So hopefully you guys can join me as I go about trying to figure out how to do it, which it doesn't look hard at all. And now the, the biggest thing is people measure out the amount of uh, starting gravity they have, then they calculate how much yeast they're gonna need or yeast cells are gonna need to process that gravity down to where they need the final gravity to be at. I'm not doing that, I'm just doing a yeast starter just as it is because really this channel is called Simple Home Brew. We don't want it to get too complicated. So what we need to do, what I've read, read and watched is you need to have at least 100 grams of dry mold extract, uh, 300 ounces or so. Uh, whack that into a pot of one litre pot of boiling water or of water and boil it. Uh, which is what I'll do. And then cool that and put it into a demijohn like this and have it grow in the demijohn with the dry malt extract, DME, and uh, it will lead it overnight basically and develop into much larger amounts of yeast cells for my coming, upcoming brew. So first I'll need to fill up my pot. Now a lot of people use a scientific flask. I don't have that, so I'm just gonna use a pot. The pot will be sanitised. What we do is put a litre of water, which I'll do now. I'll come back. So what I've got is about 1.2 litres of water, just cold water. I'm going to boil this now on the stove. So I'll bring you over here just so you can see what I'm doing. So I have my 100 grams of dry malt extract. That now will be put into my pot, which I'll now fire up. And we'll, we can pour this in now, it won't matter. It'll have to be boiled anyway. So I'll stir that in. I do have a fork somewhere around here for it. I'll just use a spoon. So we'll just stir our dry malt extract in. Let that come to the boil. And the what we have to do now is let that boil for 15 minutes. So over that 15 minute period, guys, you boil out your chlorine that is in your tap water and also sterilize the wort, which it will become, and also sterilize the pot and anything around it, which is what we need to do to make sure that we don't get bacteria into our wort, uh, into our brew later on. So that will now start boiling. Once it starts boiling, I'll come back to you and we'll carry on. So this is getting to temperature. Uh, what we do is basically keep our eye on it. It's getting quite warm. Tastes quite good too. Uh, it's getting quite warm. Once it gets to a boiling temperature, it will boil over like, uh, like milk in a pot. You've got to keep your eye on it, or otherwise it's going to go over the top, cause a massive mess, and you don't want that. And I'm going to keep my eye on it. So once it gets to boiling, I'll come back to you guys. Now, as you can see, uh, it's starting to get come to a boil, it's starting to get our little boiling point. Once it does that, you'll get foam and a build up of foam really quickly because this is pretty much malt and it has um, um, proteins in it that will foam up really quick, a bit like milk does. And what you're going to do is watch it and keep your eye on it. There's a couple of ways to stop it from going over. Is you could blow air on it with your mouth and it will slow it down or take it straight off the flame. Now flame is somewhat better, it's more controllable, you can actually turn it down really quick. Now I'm getting ready for it because it's gonna just take off. Just watch, watch what happens. Now that's a boiling point, so I can turn that down now a little. And it's gonna still keep boiling. Now because it's boiling, I can now start the timer for 15 minutes. We'll start the timer. We we'll do our 15 minutes and if it does boil over, I'll show you what happens. 
So the reason why I filled this up to uh, 1.2 litres is I'm going to lose about 200 ml of water about by boiling it for 15 minutes. So that's why I did it. It looks like it might keep itself stable. I'm a bit surprised actually. So far so good. Okay, we'll see you soon. So I pop the lid on. The steam and the heat will kill any kind of bacteria that might be on this lid. We'll just leave it there for five minutes. Hopefully it won't boil over while I'm doing that. I don't know if it's the right thing to do, but I'm doing it. <laughs> well, yeah, you can see it's foaming up. It's gonna boil over, so I've gotta be very careful. So why I'm doing that is just to kill the germs or any bacteria that might be on this lid. Once it gets to 60 degrees and above, after a five minute sort of boil time, it will kill any kind of bacteria on there. So as you can see, it's starting to foam up underneath, but I can really control that. The flame is right down now. Now you're not supposed to, when you boil wort, you're not supposed to leave the lid on. So I'll let this, some of the steam out as well as keep the lid hot and I can get the flame back up again. So once I've done that, I'll get back to you guys again. Right, we're at the end of our boil. I'll now pop this and I'll grab the camera and bring you over here. Grab your hip. Sorry about the angle, but what I've done is I've got a heap of cold water in the sink as well as I'm going to throw a couple of ice things in there, which I only have one, so one's going to have to be it. I didn't get prepared for this, but I'll whack the pot straight into the cold water here, and that will help cool it off quickly. So while that's cooling, I actually might put that underneath like that. Nope, that's not going to work. At least the water's nice and cold anyway. So that's going to cool off nice and quick. I'll leave the lid on so nothing can drop into it. And I'll grab my thermometer. And I need to drop this down to around you know, 25 degrees Celsius, which is probably low enough. So I'll whack that in there, which right now will probably tell me it's you know, 80 degrees or so Celsius. And we'll go from there. I'll keep my eye on that. I'll have to leave that there for a while to cool down. Um, I can't do much more than that. Once this gets down to temperature, guys, I'll get back to you and we'll carry on with the next step. So I'll just show you here, guys. It's down to 30 degrees Celsius. It's almost ready to get, it's almost at pitching temperature. So what we'll do is this wart here, which I'll uh, just show you, is getting close to being cool enough to pitch the yeast. Uh, Underneath I have actually got a cold frozen pack and freezing cold water and the temperature gauge is this there. So the temperature now has dropped to 29. By the time I get my demijohn, on, this thing, ready, which is just about ready, all I have to do is just rinse out the, uh, take out the sanitizer <clears throat> and get the funnel ready and sanitized for pouring my wart in. So we'll uh, carry on with that, shall we? So what I've got is my airlock and rubber stopper. My rubber stopper I was actually using in my bigger uh, fermenter, but it, it was too small. It kept falling in. It was really crap. But it's good for these. I've filled this up with sanitizer. Pretty much had this sanitizing for about two hours. So I'll now tip that sanitizer out, which is Stella sand, and with the Stella with the damage on. I will now put my funnel in. Actually, I'll grab some sanitizer from my spray bottle and quickly sanitize my funnel just to be sure that I'm not going to get anything, any kind of bacteria into my damage on. So this will now sit here. So my water is ready to go. It's down to 25 degrees, as you can see that. That'll do. That's enough to pitch the yeast. That is now cool enough to pour into my damage on, which is probably would have been anyway. So I'll pour my malt extract into my demijohn, just like that. Now some people measure the gravity of this. Look, I probably should, but I'm not going to. That's done. And as you can see, if you can see what's going on here, that's my yeast. I uh, rehydrated some pa pa uh, packet yeast. And of course, the problem with that was 
I left it too long. So now I have to try and get it into this. Pitch me yeast. In it goes. What I probably should have done is kept a bit of uh, water side to rinse this out, which I'll, uh, I'll have to use some boiled hot water now, which I have. I boiled this water a while back, so it's, it's been boiled and it's clean. So I'll quickly rinse the yeast out with that, which we should be right, and just quickly rinse it in. That will do. There's plenty of yeast there to work. Okay. Now, some of you might frown on that. It's just how it is. I'll pop the cap on and I'll quickly aerate this. So we've got yeast mixed. And that pretty much is aerated. And what we'll do is we'll sit that there and let it do its thing. I'll pop the airlock on. And that airlock will stop any bacteria going back in. But the yeast will start doing its thing. So every, they, they, people say every now and again when you're walking past it or going to the toilet doing what you do, just give it a bit of a stir, just to get the yeast up and moving around again. And this will happen overnight basically, and this will just bubble up and create my yeast pack. So I hope you enjoyed this. Next time you see this, I'll be pitching it in my new made beer. So we'll talk to you soon. Thanks guys, see you later.